Hey guys, welcome to another question and answer, and thank you for tuning in, and if you're watching this on a record or a replay, that thank you for that too, and always remember to subscribe to the YouTube channel, but before we start, I just wanted to, some sad news, that we lost our family pet, and this, this was a special pet as it is, other people are fond of their dogs, I'm sure, but Maeve, our dog Maeve died uh, Wednesday, and she had been with us for almost 20 years, isn't she cute? And um, Jimmy's uh, girlfriend's dog also died last week. I, you know, ironic. Uh, that, and that dog was 14. So between the two of them, they nearly had 34 years, and they died the same week. Isn't yeah, that something? Yeah, it's really sad. I'll tell yeah. you, it, it's a heartbreaking to watch it, Kevin. Yeah. I did it once. I was not right for three days. Yeah, yeah. They're beautiful, and they treat us. They come. This dog came to our family at such a special time in our lives that we needed we needed a dog at that time. It was a special time, uh -huh. and we really thought that God sent it to us. You know, uh -huh. she's she's just so beautiful, beautiful spirited dog. Never gave us an ounce of trouble. Never, not no trouble at all. Not like your son. I'm like uh, exactly. <laughs> right. Put me down. I mean. <laughs> no. <laughs> That's, that's, now. That's, that's, for one, that's for a mini series. That's not for a show. Oh, she well, she'd want us to joke around. Yeah, yeah. Okay. she loved people <laughs> in a good mood. I think dogs pick up on your moods definitely, and it, it, it can go the other way too. If you if you're not in a good mood, the dog will not be in a good mood. I think well, they the really dogs are there. They know you. They, yeah. they, they see what's going on and they'll come to you. She's such a void. It's such a void. In the we house. have Finn now, yeah. our mascot. We have a, a beautiful. You've seen that. Do you have a they picture of that dog, Patrick? I have plenty about it. Uh, you know, not prepared. <laughs> they've seen. They've seen him on yeah. live. Oh right, right. He's a beautiful dog. Yeah. And it's so different than Maeve. Maeve was such a lady, and, and Maeve is. I don't know if all you guys who are uh, Irish friends would know that Maeve is, was an Irish queen. And this dog was as much of a queen. She she had the mannerisms of a queen, whereas Finn is more like an adolescent, out of control Slow. teenager. <laughs> well, the fall the apple doesn't fall far Right. Oh, you know, oh, <laughs> for me, or him. You know, well, Jimmy, I'll tell you, uh, Maeve, Maeve. Um, you know, Finn was looking at a bug crawling up the wall outside the house. You know, and she said. Uh, uh, Finn is a, a gold, golden, right, Patrick? No. And uh, now Maeve would see the same bug and just watch it, and that's it. But what this dog did, Finn did, you know, he's looking at it, looking at it. They, the tongue just came out and he ate it. <laughs> the <Right>. bug. <laughs> and he had such a great, satisfied look in his face when he did that, you know. But we love our animals. So this and show is dedicated to her. Yeah, the uh, show is dedicated to Maeve and also Bianca. Bianca. Wish we had a picture, Jimmy. Next, uh, next no, time. Next time I'll, I'll, get, I'll get one for you. By the way, that voice you are hearing is Jimmy, and he came with his mass studio audience. He, he brings a, everywhere yeah. he goes, there's a, there's a crowd. He's like the Beatles. Oh. Cue the, the uh, cricket. <laughs> <laughs> or that great dang dog. I think that's copyrighted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You actually, actually, wolves in the back howling like, like yeah. <laughs> you guys are horrible. Oh, no, but we'll have Jimmy. The cricket sound effect is copyrighted, though. Can't use that, Jim. All oh, right. right. Everything's copyrighted. <laughs> really? I so know that. this chair that you see here is the chair that Jimmy is working on. It's a channel back. And you guys have been asking me forever to show a channel back chair. And Jimmy's doing it, man. So you guys will be seeing that soon. Well, I shouldn't say soon. Yeah, I don't say soon. Right. right. But we do have we currently. We will try to work on it quick as we can. Yeah. We, we will be doing the bottom next week, correct? Yeah, yeah. This isn't a, an exceptionally large chair. So it may go faster than some of your other projects, Jimmy. Uh, and we're going to have you up here to talk I mean, a little like bit about... 27 lessons? I think that's the record, right? <laughs> yeah. We're going to have you up to talk about this, but also to finish up that ottoman that we started a long time ago. Okay. Um, we're going to finish that up. And Jimmy's going to try to do that at home. And I want to, I want him to bring it back when he's done, right? Okay. So we, we were doing the restoration uh, live on YouTube, and he's going to finish that today for you guys. And some interesting points I want to put uh, point out on that. So anyhow, let's get to our questions. I, I did want to update... The YouTube's going great. We have been, uh, we, as as promised, we're doing more YouTube videos. We, how many have we put up recently, Patrick? One, but we have, well, uh, three now. Three in the can, can, as they say. Yeah, yeah. Okay, and those are going to be going up. Yes, they will. So you know, we're we're going to be averaging, let's say, two or three YouTube videos a week, plus the question and answer, which concluded that. So we're going to be very prolific, Jimmy. Uh, and trying our best. So now let's get to <coughs> any other business. Oh, the bless you. Uh, I did want to mention the Facebook form, you guys.
please don't speaking forget of, that. Speaking of crickets. <laughs> yeah, it's been really <laughs> slow. But the you know, many people are on there. We well, don't, right, Jimmy? Uh, yeah, I approved, uh, I believe, three or four people, even last right. week when I was on vacation. But I think they're going on there just watching everything. We encourage people to post their own projects on there. But I think a lot of people are on vacation. So yeah. It's the summertime, most places. I know in Australia. Well, uh, yeah, I'm but. sure <laughs> in another few more weeks people start getting back into their, you know, Remember, if you are on vacation, you can still upholster. Just bring a can. If you if you go to the beach or the lake, yeah. bring a can of Scotch yeah, Guard. Everything will be okay, right? Yeah, I'm always doing my chair and staple gun outside. I know, Jim. And Two Jimmy. Beach. Did you um, find any Bigfoot up there in Maine when you were up there? No, no, no. I found some very nice food. Oh my God, we food. went to some nice restaurants. Food. Um, yes, okay. uh, lobster was not. No, lobster was oh. pricey. Yeah. Clams were pricey. But we did have some nice pizza. Or can I mention the name? Yeah. The Portland Pie Company in Portland, Maine. Oh, wow. Beautiful. Wow, that's nice. That sounds Beautiful. like a fun time. Oh, yes. I, I, I will be making that, I uh, think, I, every time I go up, I will go out of my way to go there. Well, it's good to have you back. It's been quite a void here without you. I know. I, I, I heard the tears. Uh, I, I don't know if they were from next door, at the next room, or whether it was from here. They were chopping onions, so. Uh, <laughs> of course. So let's get to the YouTube uh, comments. Always comments on YouTube, right, Patrick? That never seems to slow down. Oh, yeah. And this in particular one, this 1860s chair that Patrick, I, I really do think the thumbnails make a difference. I think that gets attention. Red arrows. Everybody stops at a red arrow, right? And, and uh, this one in particular had some history attached to it. We found out the maker of the, the chair, and we tracked him down. And he was actually uh, famous enough to be in Wikipedia, right, Patrick? And we, we had some information. He doesn't remember, I don't think. But he did a great uh, historical um, segment on that, and um, I think that's the reason why, and the content you know, that we have. This one here is part five, measuring and applying the fabric. That was a, a complete chair, wasn't it, Patrick? On YouTube, I believe. I think so. The chair, maybe not. And not sure. the, the couch one was the one, the sofa. That gets a lot of attention. Yeah. So, as usual, this is a live question and answer. So anybody out there who has that chair that's giving them a hard time and they, they want to try to figure it out, I have my board with me. I can draw a picture <laughs> uh, and figure things out, hopefully. Uh, this, is so, this is a comment by Frida. She's been really good a supporter, hasn't she, Patrick? Mm -hmm. I think she's commented on a few. Are you reading it the wrong way? So from the bottom up. I'm Janine. reading it. Oh, Janine is the first. I started with the oldest question. Okay, Janine. She's at the Poster Show Live. She says, um, yes, please. Go through your work dockets as an ongoing segment, which I have here, Janine, because I, I, I did read this. Very informative and some great tips already just today, which was last week. Thanks also for the measurement tips. I think that was that is what I'll struggle with most if I had to quote how much fabric is needed without being able to measure exactly and plan beforehand. Yeah, I think the other thing too is your customers will be impressed if you can really just come up with the, the yardages just like that. I don't think you're going to get caught too much if you follow me and, and I, I, my explanations, but it's better to look a professional, right, at like, and, and have the, all the answers. Uh, I don't think customers want to hear, I'll get back to you on that one, you know, I think you have to really have all the answers there. And I think yardage and figuring yardage out is the hardest thing for people. And I, I know companies, other companies where they didn't teach their training, bigger companies, maybe didn't train their staff enough or something, and they tend to really overinflate the yardages, which is bad too. You don't want to do that because that appears like you're gouging, you know, and trying to make money that you don't, you know, you, know, you don't want to do that. You want to, you want to have it close to what it actually takes, put it that way. Uh, club chair slipcover. We already got a comment from Janine on this. Lesson one. I think lesson two was up, Patrick. Yep. Came well, up today. So. That lesson two went up today, you guys. So if you if you are a subscriber, uh, you have available that, and I think that that is the greatest value uh, I think on YouTube for upholstery and slip covering. Now we're expanding our little world here, and Bernice. Um, <laughs> Bernice has been around. She, she's been an expert in her field for a long time. And I'll tell you how long, Patrick. 
she did some uh, VHA, uh, what do they call those VHS. old tapes? Yeah, VHS. VHS tapes for, for a slipcover. That's your time, for crying out loud. Well, no, that's... It's still in my time. Jim, Jimmy, you, you, you were in the time of uh, cave drawings, weren't yeah, you? Yeah, no, 78 records. <laughs> Eight tracks. Eight tracks, I do remember. Um, but she's been around, and she's an expert, and she has her own... People have taken, I know people have taken her idea and run with it and call it their own. But she was the original one on that method. What does she call it, Patrick? That method double she uses? Double on back, I think. Double on I back, know. is that right? Double She's on half. Double on half. Double on half. She developed that. And anybody who's interested in slip covers, you should, you should watch this. I mean, she's really good. One of the best. So now we have, uh, Janine says this, the club chair slip cover. Great information. I'm intrigued to see this progress as I've slip covered furniture before, but not encountered this technique. If it saves a minimum of 40% time, I'll be doing more slip covers as well as upholstering in the future. Great camera work, too, Patrick. Great camera thank work, you. Janine says. Thank you. Focusing in tight to see the details is essential. So thanks. So thanks. You can really see all refining this process for us in both online classes and YouTube videos. So for all you people who are wondering, should you pay for online classes? Are they worth it? I think Janine is our best testimonial to that. She is she's saying uh, that, that it's great value. And we're not going to go up on the price anytime soon, right, Patrick? Mm -mm. We, we think that part of this is definitely, um, what do you call it? Industry, uh, thankful, you know, we, we're, not, we're not out to... Make, we know we're not going to make a killing on these videos, but we, we'd well, like I to promote the industry. We'd like to promote the industry then, Jimmy. Well, it's a good idea. I mean, considering what we're adding to the, I'm going to say, the collection every time. Yeah, I mean, yeah. You know, I mean, uh, again, that's why when, you know, at least if the, the forum people say, well, I'd like to see you try this again. I'd like right. to see this again. Um, you know, we'll try to, we'll work it out. We're just hoping that people on the online classes will... And we have a website upholstery on Broadway where they can buy supplies. Um, we, we, we would welcome that um, to try to in, in, uh, support what we do. That's great. Um, and, also, and the online classes. So uh, next comment is how to make double piping. Uh, this is from Larry Moore. I went to buy my first Juki machine tonight only to find that it was a three-phase machine. Dang, wanting to try some of the techniques. So... That machine, I think, is a little bit too much machine for a beginner. If you're going to get a Juki, ask um, ask for the, I'm not sure the model numbers anymore. Jimmy, can you read that model number on that over there? Uh, the DDL, is that what you're looking yep. for? Yep, our model, DDL. DDL 555. 555. O N. O N? Yep. So those, are, those models that I have, I have two of them. Uh, school, they're for, they're for students actually, and I like using them myself because they don't break down and they're simple. And you know, when they tell you something, I think sometimes people overthink their sewing machines. Um, I don't think you have to do that. I don't even think you need a walking foot, to be honest with you. I know somebody out there in commercial work would say, He's crazy, you always need a walking foot. Maybe in commercial work you do, but residential work, not so much. Um, I think keep it simple. Make sure that the most important thing is a good stitch. Make sure that you got a machine that makes a good stitch. That's the most important thing. And then the skill of using a machine, that, that is something else. We don't get into a lot of that, but I will tell you that even the most sophisticated machine out there, computer-run machine out there, you still need basic sewing skills to operate them. Well, you got to know what it's doing. you got to know what it's doing. It's not going to do the job. You're not going to close your eyes and step on the gas and have the thing made, right? No, so, I mean, it's great that they have that out there, but I think that would be for somebody who's been yeah. seasoned in the basics of sewing. Yeah, some techniques like uh, top stitching and things like that, French seams. You need double, you need specialized machines sometimes, especially if you're doing a lot of it. But in, a, in, a, in an upholstery shop, you know, we're doing more stitching. We don't, we don't consider ourselves seamstresses. That's a big difference. Seamstress and a stitcher. People don't realize that. They are uh, two different things. Seamstress, tailor, stitcher, right? Stitcher, stitcher is a is somebody that can get on a machine like me, and so a seamstress is somebody that could work for an upholsterer, but it's doing the more refined things like uh, ruffle skirts and things like that. A tailor is one step above all of us. And yes. 
But it all comes under, and because they're dealing with smaller, they're dealing with the human form, which let me tell you, we think upholstered furniture is tough. The human form, especially, you try working with the bride that comes in six months before the wedding, and then right before the, you know, those six months go by, and she, she's, she's a little nervous, <laughs> but she's a little well, nervous. Well, for the groom, too, as well, yeah. Oh, oh yeah, I've been relaxing at the home, I didn't really... But then she comes in, and that dress doesn't fit, man. At least our furniture doesn't threaten us, right, Jimmy? Not yet. <laughs> Good point, right? Good point. Um, so, uh, the next comment, we like to have fun too, right? Now I can get to the 1860s thing, right? So, are there anybody uh, asking questions, Pat? I know, quiet right now. Quiet. Yeah. Do we have our friends from Ireland watching? I don't know. Uh, well, that's okay. How to post They're 18... They're probably sunning themselves on the uh, southern part of the, the continent there. Right. Maybe. I think the pubs are open over there, aren't they? So we don't have any Irish people watching right now. Yeah, yeah. I'm <laughs> just I, kidding. I think the broadcasting would definitely be probably you versus soccer. I think you kind of lose. Sure. <laughs> you know, if you want, if you want to get a witty answer to anything, go into any pub and, and, and ask them, "How's it going in here?" They, they, you wouldn't believe the answer. Tell the story. Anything you could say, anything, and they're off and running. Anyhow. Frida says, great video. I just finished tying the springs on my chair. I never thought I could do this, but I had my computer next to me while I was doing it. It was like having you next to me. Oh, that's a great compliment, isn't it, Jimmy? Well, uh, why would they, what, next to me or are you next to you? <laughs> oh, that's right. I wasn't here for that. So now we got, um, again, you know, this 1860s chair, I think it's two or three comments every week, Patrick. Well, it's, it's the same person, so. Oh, but that's yeah. okay. Just finished hand tying the springs on my vintage chair. I was so afraid that I would not be able to do it. I took my computer and played and replayed this episode while doing it. I had a great time and I'm so happy how it turned out. I felt like I had you right next to me teaching me the whole time. Thank you, Frida. I really appreciate that compliment. Um, Gregory on how to apply leather to a drop-in seat says, Is one inch high density foam 2.6 slash 45 sufficient for a dining chair that gets used every day. I was about to order two inches. Well, you know, I think that what people have to realize is that dining room chairs are built the way they are originally um, to sit underneath the table that they were made for. And you'd be surprised adding two inches how much of a difference that makes in, the, in dining. Remember, they're dining chairs. Yes. They're not side chairs. I had, I had a couple bring in six chairs, seven chairs, whatever they were, and I, I, I thought we, you know, sometimes, you know, that's why I like, I'm going to be reading these invoices. Um, the only thing about the modern world with the texting and everything, sometimes we get lost in translation instructions. So they were assuming I was going to put padding in or a lot more padding than, than I got, and they weren't happy. And I said, well, these are, these are wooden seats, first of all, and they're not meant to be soft. You know, they, a dining room chair, once you start, you know, you're supposed to be upright on a dining chair, just... You know, this is a traditional method of eat, of dining, you know. Well, I think people want that cushion that's soft. They're feeling. thinking more like a club chair, you know, but but that's fine. I, I was I was I'm gonna have to do these over again. See, even I even I have to do things over again. <laughs> but this was more of a miscommunication or contractual contractually we had a problem, um, and it wasn't anybody's particular it wasn't either one person's fault. It was you know, miscommunication. So that's why I like, I, I think this segment that we're going to add to the show, Patrick, mm -hmm. about invoice, about my invoices, I'm going to read them. Mm -hmm. uh, it's funny, uh, she calls them, she calls them, uh, Janine calls them dockets. I would put them up on the screen, but I think they have too much personal information. No, no, I won't, no, I'm just going to read the instructions. Not, not on the screen, that's right. Oh, I got some big news. Oh, I forgot. Well, I had a call today. Did you see that call, Patrick, about Richard Nixon's uh, no. uh, 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 chief of staff? No. Uh, Jimmy, you know who Richard Nixon's chief of staff was? I forgot. Yeah, Richard Nixon's. He was involved in the Watergate scandal. Endelman? Yes. Good for you. Wow. It's his, get, get this, love seat. <laughs> now, I'm not going to get into politics, Jimmy. A rough Republican in a love seat? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But you know, this well, is let's get into that. this well, is going to be a fun one. Another, another Will they ever stop? This, What's next? We're getting all kind. We got, we got <laughs> so the. How did you get this call? I don't know. We got John Belushi's sofa. I did Napoleon's chairs, actual chair. Friends sofa. We did the friend sofa. Uh, we did. More. Uh, did I mention John Belushi, right? There's, well, there's got to be more. The San Francisco earthquake sofa, which we have in shop right now, that we're going to be upholstering, Jimmy. 
The only thing oh, about so that is it's, it's still I'm shaking, not, Jimmy, after all these I years. I don't listen to you. I'm like the old one. I'll bring the coffees, I swear. Jimmy, we got, we're, 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 it's such an interesting thing, furniture, when you think about it, you know, and you, I mean, not all the stories are sensational, but this one would be, because what would we find in it, you know, you'd think. So we'll make a segment on this, right, Patrick? Absolutely. What will we find? Well, I'm, I'm going to ask my studio audience, all those who have cell phones, please turn them off. You guys back there in the fifth row, well, what are you doing there? <laughs> I, I think that's the time to cue the crickets. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's kind of, the joke's getting kind of old. Isn't it? uh, it's been used twice, okay? <laughs> old like old the listen, old, old upholsterers' jokes never die. They always recover. Yeah. Uh, isn't I mean, that the theme of that magazine? More crickets. <laughs> <laughs> just finished oh that I read that oh and that high density so the dining room chairs you got to be careful how much padding you put on them because if it if it doesn't translate very well to the, to the bottom of the table that you're sitting underneath right mm -hmm. how good is it so I, I, I usually it's one inch in cotton one inch foam and cotton but before you put that one inch foam on you want to put a little bit of padding underneath the foam that's that's one of the secrets right what kind of padding Usually cotton, like an oval-shaped cotton underneath there, then the one-inch uh, foam, okay. and then another layer of maybe cotton, and that's about an inch, th th inch thick. Well, now, what does that do? That's a good buffer between the fabric and the foam, so it doesn't walk. You know, fabric... Oh, so it doesn't slide. It, if it walks, it starts to wear out faster. Oh, okay. so So it allows it, the fabric just to go like this instead of like this, mm -hmm. right? Okay. Okay, so the next one is uh, from DNL Restoration Repair. This is the upholstery show live last week, and and he says or she says, "Hey, Don, it's a man, Don Day, here, and your show is awesome. Uh, I have done, especially when Jimmy is not there. You seem to be doing something. Hey, no, I'm just were, kidding. <laughs> you know, I've done this crap really, since you know you're gonna sleep tonight. No. <laughs> since 1984, a few years ago, as double shifts when my kids grew up." They all had food at the table. What was happening happened to me is burnout, but I, and I have a difficult time going to work. But your show is naturally so upbeat. What a breath of fresh air! Would love to chat sometimes. Winslow, Maine is where I reside. Brings up a good point. Sometimes the repetitive side of what we do can be boring, and and people lose interest that way. And and here's the interesting part: is that apprentices usually are very excited. They take classes and. Um, even even you know a ten week or twelve week class that that's blinking Patrick intermission intermission technical difficulties. You're back. We're back. <laughs> you dated Jerry for a couple of months. How was that? I'm <laughs> just a copywriter. <laughs> <laughs> We're just kidding, you guys. That was just a joke. Um, a TV reference. A TV, a, a, a famous comedian, uh, uh, right, Patrick, Social in the nineties. Yeah, right? yeah. Can't remember. <laughs> um, so I got going to go on. Should be on uh, uh, Oliver something. Else. So Tina, Tina brought up that. Um, oh, you're still on that one. Hello. Yeah, I wanted to make a point about that. So that when you begin, most people are excited and it's fun. Um, as far as knowledge goes, though, I could probably do in one night, I could probably go through a history of upholstery in one night and techniques. Uh, it just doesn't translate. There's not that much solid information like that uh, about upholstery. It's more, you know, you just have to do it. And you have to watch the online classes and things like that. But um, it brings up an interesting point because once you get good enough to be on your own, to be solo, and then you, you know, you're going along and you're journeyman. The journeyman part of any trade, I think, is the, is, is the most difficult to get through because I think that, that is the, the repetitive, the long days, the, you know, you're, you're trying to make more money by working more hours and things like that. But when you get more skillful and quicker, what that means is hopefully you're quicker, your days can be shorter and more, uh, more involved, more intense with various projects so that's what get when, when you when you get through the journeyman period I, I think that it, it's it reminds me of the apprenticeship period right now I think I'm having as much fun as I did when I first started so 
So to hang in there if, if, you, if you're getting bored, do things like I've, I've made videos about how to get yourself excited. We get excited about the history. It's not just the crazy history or the, or the, the celebrity history. I get a kick out of the ordinary history too. I ask people, you know, whose was this? Well, my great grandmother, she was part of the suffrage movement. Or, you know, she brings up these things. They weren't famous, but they, they did famous things or, or even ordinary situations I like. Like, I love it when somebody says, this is the chair that my mother nursed me on and she was nursed by her, my grandmother on the same chair. That, that's cool, you know? The, what history that has. I mean, we should all be so lucky to have uh, a piece of furniture in your house that, that brings back that nostalgia. Um, but anyhow, that's what I like about it. That's what, get, that's what keeps me going. And of course, these things that we do here now on Mondays, you know, and listening to everybody out there, that, that's what the forum's about too, if, you know? If you have an interesting piece of furniture or an interesting story about a piece of furniture, please post that on the forum. You know, like the, the love seat that I did that was taken out to sea by that storm down the Cape Cod there, Jimmy. You know, it was taken yeah, out yeah, to wait, sea. Let me, uh, Patrick, uh, pipe in the music. <laughs> <laughs> what, love story? Memory lane. <laughs> no, we, we can do a little harmonica. <laughs> yeah, Jimmy. Yeah, uh, okay, well, they're yeah, the crickets again. <laughs> All right, we go to uh, D. Oliver. She says, your explanation, this is about cutting around post, are great. I was wondering what to do with my dining room chairs, and now I know. Thanks. And then we come to the last page, and we got applying trim to French chairs. And Patrick has a picture of a French flag. That's interesting. And we did this Turkish chair. Patrick got a picture of a Turkish chair. I like that, Patrick. Turkish flag. Yeah. Turkish flag. Thank you so much. I'm no longer afraid to ruin my chairs. <laughs> Is that a good thing? Yeah, that's a good thing. Robert says, the upholstery show lied. Thanks for the advice. Why not? It's free. <laughs> free advice, right, Jimmy? Absolutely. And um, quick tips, upholstering, fixing upholstery damage by a pet. And Lawrence says the reveal, <laughs> the reveal is magic. That was the one that. That was even that funny thing. I think yeah. that the cat had totally <laughs> destroyed this chair. It looked like a mountain lion they had in there. They didn't have a cat, Jimmy. Some people adopt or they pick up feral cats. They think of cats. One dude had a bobcat in his house, thinking it was a regular cat. Right. Is that the same? It's probably related to that woman who thinks the cat is the raccoon, or the raccoon is the cat. Yeah, that's a little the bit. Night? Yeah, well, what, maybe it's the same person. Maybe they're related. <laughs> yeah, they definitely got to tune into National Geographic. Right. So now I think I'm going to, before I have Jimmy up here, I think I'm going to, that segment that people like, I'm going to read a few more of these um, invoices that I have. Um, this is an interesting one, a sofa, it just came in. So this one was getting a sofa. I, I circle my, I can't show you this because like Patrick said, the names and phone numbers and everything. But I have a small invoice um, and I, uh, I circle the amount of yardages, which is important. I say one sofa, the amount of yardages circled. And then I have instructions underneath that, with skirt, no changes. I emphasize instructions sometimes too. Don't, don't, you know, Assume that you're going to even know your own instructions two weeks or a month or two months later. So I like to be as descriptive as possible with these, but simple too. So this says it all. One sofa, 18 yards, with skirt, no changes. So today you can take a picture before you strip it, the, the piece of furniture, or you've already have, you already have from the client a picture of the sofa or chair that you're doing. You know, that's how I usually ask people to send me pictures first. I, and then the hot copy's done when they come in, and, and it's going to be, it may be a job, excuse me. <coughs> Although, I have a pile, I'll never run out of invoices, because I have a pile of invoices this much, all the jobs that I didn't get. And that's interesting, too. You might ask me, why didn't I get them? By the way, are there any other questions live? Yeah. No, the SG says hello. Okay, hello. And then on this one here, they're getting two, uh, they're replacing the two back cushions with 50-50 down feather. And that's what I recommend on, that's the premium back cushion. And then the foam cushion seats that they're getting. So this is a little extra, that cost extra. So the next one is, um, this is an interesting one too. <coughs> this is two dining room chairs. And uh, these are allergies, you guys, wicked allergies around here. Uh, I never got allergies the first year, 63 years, Jimmy, and no allergies. Really? 
So he had two dining room chairs. Very good resistance. Yeah, sure yeah. something else. Mm -hmm. Two dining room chairs that I repaired from the bottom. That I saved these chairs from collapsing, and the customers happy because that that's a quick fix. It's not a lot of money, and it, it'll it's a long term fix too. Once you do that, and I we've shown that on YouTube too. So the next one. These are slip seats. I mentioned this last week, and I think this this is probably worth another mention. Is that these slip seats that I did on this particular job, they were actually drop in inside the frame. They're very high end. Usually, that's an indication it's a high end dining room chair when they fit inside the frame. Um, but the thing about those is you cannot put um, cotton on the edges of that. You need to trim your cotton a little bit or and your foam back away from that edge. So the only thing on the edge is the actual fabric and they fit like a glove. I was so happy because you never know the fabric was a little thicker um, and the fabric that was on there wasn't. These fit better than the old fabric. On the net of interesting um, sofa come in. It's called the fainting sofa. You guys might be aware of that or what those are. And um, I always get a kick out of fainting sofas, Jimmy, because in the old Victorian days, right, when a, when a, when a lady, you know, you've seen Gone with the Wind, right? Yes. The, when a lady uh, kind of rolled back. When a lady starts to faint, she starts to turn her arm around like this, her hand goes around like this, and the back of her hand goes up on her forehead. And she says, I do believe I'm about to faint. And she'll turn around, where's the sofa? Where's the fainting sofa? And if it's across the room, she'll back up. And then... It's really crazy, Jimmy. They seem to always fall into the fainting sofa. Yes, thank God it's nice and clean. Just uh, right, over. and with such dignity, you know, they they don't jump into the furniture. They just fall very lightly, well, Jimmy. Is that, is that a? Because uh, I'm trying to think of it. It's not a very soft. It's kind of a velvety. Uh, oh no, very... fainting sofas are very comfortable. We have a first question, Jimmy, and it's not from you. Well, actually, this is a comment. Comment. Gabrielle says, since the smoke from the west has arrived, everyone appears to be having allergies. Yeah, it, it's been here for about a week, the smoke from the west. Yeah, thank you for confirming that, Gabriel. Yeah, this is tough. First time in 63 years for me. So I have a job that I have to be really careful. It's for an optometrist. <laughs> So I think I better do a good job on that, Jimmy, because you know they got good eyesight, right? Yeah, they're good. You may have somebody who's very detailed. We used to joke with an upholsterer who wasn't that good, and he was a good-natured guy, anyhow. We used to say, "We'll deliver your piece with sunglasses in at night time, so, yeah. <laughs> so the people Keep don't the look lights too off." <laughs> That's okay, right, Jimmy? Absolutely. What do they say? That the sofas get better looking at closing time? Is that what they say, Jimmy? Yeah, yeah. I'm kind of like, well, never mind. We'll that <laughs> and here's a job. It's a it's an antique sofa uh, from Germany, and this is a, a Victorian era, and this was up three flights of stairs in a community near me, and I was so happy to, that the young the man. Um, he had a friend, they're both strong, and they took the sofa to me. I never get a break like that, but this was a good break. Um, and this is an interesting piece. This will be an interesting piece when it's mm. done. And Jimmy, we got one, um, we got, uh, I'm doing a bunch of mid-century furniture, a whole living room full of mid-century. Let me just so, hang out with you. I can see some of these things, how you do it. Yeah. yeah. Womb chair with an ottoman, which we, we've got a string of womb chairs, Jimmy. Really? Yeah. We we have to make we have to make room for our womb chairs. Oh, say that ten times fast. Womb, actually, I was gonna say fruit float. What's that? Fruit float. I I don't understand. Fruit. Fruit float. Yeah, say that six times fast. <laughs> no, you're gonna trick me. I'm not, uh, gonna, I'm not gonna be tricked. You're old, but you're not that old. <laughs> and here's another customer. She has a club chair. And I just did um, a womb chair for her. But this club chair, this is interesting. She had her own fabric. So I usually abbreviate that. I say C-O-M, customer's own material. Mm -hmm. And when you have a customer's own material, you'd better talk to your customer about what they want, about the direction. Because, because this one here could have been gone on both ways, but she had very strong ideas about how it should go, which side should go, and how it, the direction. So when you look at a piece of fabric, Jimmy, there are eight different possibilities on how to run it mm -hmm. some fabrics eight possible ways right up and down 
wait a minute, is that right? Hold on, let me say, yeah, eight ways, up and down, side to side, both both ways. So that's four, and then when you reverse the fabric, there's four more ways. Mm -hmm. So you'd better talk to your customer. So I talked to her, and I've got down here, asterisk. And when, that, when I see an asterisk next to my own instructions, mm -hmm. that means pay attention, stupid, <laughs> to well, me. Well, yeah, there's something else there that should be addressed. And I say, good side out. What does that mean, Jimmy? Good side out. Well, it's kind of a code. Well, yeah. The good mean, side, when it's rolled, it's rolled in the wrong way. Oftentimes, when people buy their own fabric, the people selling it aren't going to bother to re-roll the fabric. They take yeah. it and they, you know, all the bad side, uh, the good side is out. And it should be in for proper, you know, transportation. And then I, I asterisk, no skirt, because it has a skirt right now. No skirt. Asterisk, no other changes, meaning the, the welting that's everywhere else is going to be done the same. So there's, there's a lot of instructions. And then the price. I must have been in a really good mood that day because the price is really good. Well, I'll take that price because I can have a... <laughs> <laughs> and then this is the John Belushi sofa that we talked about a lot. And this is funny. I never... How do they ever do this? One John Belushi sofa, 19 yards. <laughs> is that what it took? Wow. Yeah, that's how I have it written how down. How much is the material for total? What's that? How much was the material for total? 19 yards. They haven't picked the fabric out yet. What are they waiting for, man? I don't know. Oh, and then I have on the bottom, um, on John's sofa, like I know him, on uh, asterisk again, on John's sofa, um, leaning towards the same style. The customer's leaning towards the same style. So that's just some of the, that's good examples of the various... So do I get bored? How can I get bored with all that stuff? I find that stuff interesting to you, Jimmy. I do. It's a, you know, it's somebody you, it's been in your life in an indirect way. So. I mean, the world, we, we live in such a small world. It's probably a good thing to remember that, right, with, with how um, we should treat one another, really. Because mm -hmm. you never know who that person is, right? Yeah. It could be a relative. It could be a friend. It could be a long-lost love or something, you know? So, I mean, I think uh, it's worth paying attention to. You know, I have John Belushi's sofa, and I'm calling him John. I mean, I'm personalizing it. I don't know if that's weird or not, but, no, no, you know, no. you know, it's a small world. You know, he no, was a local no. guy, really. I mean, I've been down to Martha's Vineyard, and that's where his, he, he used to hang, I guess. You know, things like that. But anyhow, so, Jimmy, would you like to come up here and talk I a little bit about this? I would love to come up here. Here comes Jimmy, everybody, the drum roll. Get the dog with its tail hitting the... Hit the side of the building. Yeah, my only fan. <laughs> it's all right. I can take it. Jimmy, welcome to... I said I will get over it. So. Right. Welcome and, um, you know, what do you think about this project that you've started? <sighs> well, I'll tell you. Uh, I did. It took quite a while for, to find a channel back chair. There was nothing out there. Mm. I would say three months. Really? Three months of looking on the Facebook community. Wow. Asking some people, and you know, of course, no, 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 I have this instead. No, 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 is what I, you know, I need this for a project. I have a, a large, massive audience in the thousands that That's are, right. That's that right. are looking for something uh, they want to see. So ha, have was, the tour buses pulled up outside your house yet? Uh, no, they, 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 you know, they just kind of blow the horn and keep going. <laughs> you know. What can I say? It's all, it's all, it's all, the bus driver's good nature. So. <laughs> Actually, I think he's telling me to get out of the street. <laughs> so you're doing a good job. You're, you've got the webbing on the bottom. And tell people about what the spring system was and what, it, what the problem with that was. Well, it was, I believe, coconut fiber. Um, actually, we had three sets of, I mean, from the beginning, we had three sets of na uh, staples. We also have nails, too, as well. The, uh, an, uh, the fabric that was originally on it was just covered over with uh, a floral pattern that we had that was on it. And uh, I can't remember the bottom what we had here. It, was, uh, it wasn't that strong, I can tell you that. It was really... Uh, zigzag springs, right? Yeah, zigzag. And, and the zigzag springs were forcing the top. The, the one was broken, I think. Two were broken or something. Yeah, well, so. yeah. They we couldn't were, reuse them, and we don't want. I don't. I've never used zigzag springs. I don't use it as a replacement. 
we can't do coil springs. Do you, do you know why we can't do coil springs on this? Do you, do you remember? Well, that's what I was going to ask you. I mean, I know it's only about, what, three, four inches of height, mm. okay? But if with what grade of um, coil? We're not doing coil springs because the frame, I think, won't take it. It's a delicate frame. Uh, so the decision that we've made was we web the bottom and we're going to foam. We're going to we're going to we're going to do this in foam. Okay. But a good foam, good quality foam. So there's no way really you could even get a small. Well, the springs have to be anchored with big tacks, and there's a lot of tacking that goes on with those. Really? So, yeah. So I, I'd like to see it do a foam seat on it. Okay. We're going to double like a four. I just want to know what the di what you could have done if if there was an alternative to the foam. Yeah. I mean. The only alternative, the three things that you could have done on the seat, okay. because it's an upholstered seat, people people should know that. It's a crown seat, it's an upholstered crown seat. Okay. And the zigzag springs are a really bad idea uh, on any seat, because they do break and they do force the frame, uh, they compromise the frame. So coil springs is another way, um, and then foam is the third way. So there are three different things that you can use. Mm -hmm. I'm going with the foam because I think the frame is just too fragile, and I think that uh, I don't want the frame to break. And I think it's probably the most uh, low impact way of doing it. Mm -hmm. And I think the result will be the st will be nearly the same. Okay. So it will look crown. It will look like the okay. spring. And the key to an all foam seat, if you have to do one, mm -hmm. is the density and making sure that it's a good foam. Mm -hmm. If it's a lousy foam and it breaks down, it's not going to be any good for the. No. So anybody. no memory foam on this. You don't use memory foam in upholstery. I don't use it anywhere in upholstery. Okay. I don't like I don't like how much compression it compresses too much, and that puts an incredible strain on the fabric. So if you use a memory foam out there, I don't I don't I don't advise it on upholstered pieces at all, mm -hmm. especially okay. cushions, loose cushions, and things like that. So um, yeah, so that's that's going to be upholstered. No loose cushions. Just going to be an upholstered seat. And then your arms get very, the inside arms get very little padding. Right. A little. Maybe maybe one on. inch, maybe a one inch and cotton maybe. Really? The foam. The back is the channel with the, do you want to show people the back cotton that you've taken out of there? It's right down uh, there. Yes, actually. This is uh, you one You can just take one piece out. This Think. is what we have here. Yeah. When it was done. Actually, it's probably redone twice. I like to reuse the, the old one. Because they've been rolled and they're flat and they're, they're tight. Okay. Uh, newer cotton, which uh, we can do, we can roll it, but it, it doesn't roll as tight as, as as the old stuff is becomes. Okay. So it actually it it, it it transitions better. Hear that? You hear me say that word a lot in upholstery transition. Okay. So that transitions into the channel better than the the loose stuff would be. When you the make stuff. the channels to the back of the chair, <coughs> do you? If you were to put brand new cotton in, mm -hmm. do you stuff it, or do you? How, how does it? How well, do you kind of get it to where this stuff should be? It, and you know, some people have channel stuffers, and I don't. I don't use those. I hand stuff my channels. Okay. So you'll see, because you're going to be doing it, but oh. that's going to be too. Sure, I'm all making me work. There's labor laws. I know that union. What's that? Upholsterers <laughs> union. Six Speaking and seven eighths. <laughs> Speaking of labor laws, I think we're done with this. Jimmy, do you want to put this down and put your ottoman up? Sure. I want, I want to finish that. We have a question. Sure, we have a question. Uh, this is from Gabriel again. Hey, Gabriel. Are you going to use tins or silk wrap? Oh, yeah. yeah I, don't use, I don't use either one. I actually have a method that I do. I know when you guys see it, you're probably going to say, wow, what's he doing? Why is he, why is he doing it that way? But what I do, um, it's a muslin line in the back, and uh, I lay out my channels in the order they came out, by the way. And um, what I do is I cut the middle up with the pair of scissors in the back with the muslin. The muslin's not cut. I okay. cut it. I cut it about, depending on how high the channel is, I cut it about a foot. Okay. And then I stuff the top, and then I stuff the bottom. And then I hand stitch the channel back. Oh, yes, sir. The wow, reason I do that is because I have more, Gabriel. I have more control over how the ends look more, and okay. the ends are important with these channels. So you'll see, we're going to be featuring this. Gabriel, I'm not sure if she is she a 
subscriber, Patrick, to the online I, classes? I believe she might be. I think she is. She probably is. She's been around a while with us. Thank you. Yeah, we, I haven't had a good conversation with her in a while. She, she's out there. She's always odds and crafts time. Oh right. my gosh. Hey, you know what I'm watching lately? These shows on uh, yard sales. They go in there and they compete against the teams. Yes, I see that all the time. Other, other kind uh, of we this. plan on going out to Brimfield. You're going to do that, Jimmy? Yeah, I'm looking for upholstery. I've for, heard, I've heard of people getting in uh, fights uh, over there with furniture. <laughs> well, uh, I don't know. I mean, if you have a good idea in your mind about what you want to see, you say, oh, I got this old, you know, the little old footlock, and you say, then I'm going to make this into something else. No, are you worried that people will recognize you out there? Are you going to bring your security team with you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, to I make have, sure to yeah. protect you, to have that buffer zone, you know. Maybe, yeah, maybe maybe if I can rent a couple of dogs from the ASPCA, <laughs> you can kind of, you know. I can just see the scene now. People see Jimmy and they go, look, isn't that Jimmy? Isn't he the star? I'm surrounded by nine, ten chihuahuas. <laughs> you all ready to pounce on anybody that comes near me? Yeah. So. Just you know what to do? Just put a lot of sausage and hamburger in your pocket. Yeah, then, then they'll be on me. And not on the <laughs> so, Jimmy, I think, I think you're ready for the next step. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come down here a little bit on my knees to show you something. Um, I just want to secure this side. Okay. So what we did was we, we put... We put the foam. Would you want to tell people what, what we did on that? Well, we had, that it's been so long, we had the two inch foam, we have the uh, rubberized horse here. You had the edge roll. The edge roll, and the, everything was laid into the center of that. You got your scissors over there, Jimmy? Uh, they are behind you. All right, let me get See them. what I'm doing right now? I'm getting eye level. You can't do this standing up. You really do have to get eye level because you're going to do something fine here, okay? Anytime you're getting into something fine, you really need to get just a little bit. Look at the angle, you guys, that my eyes are at. That's why I'm down here. Even a chair. A chair might do it. Let me just pull the chair over and see, see where this brings me. It's a little bit too far up. I'm not comfortable with that because what I'm going to show you is it's a real, you know, uh, it's fine. So let me get down here. I really need to get, first of all, my staples. We're going to make this pull over all the way. Okay. So my staples are near the bottom. They don't have to be, they can be crooked if you want, it doesn't matter how neat they are, but this is the part that has to matter. So you want to be even, the day crumb wants to be even with the edge, okay? Okay. So Jimmy, I want you to do some... Cutting? No, no, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this one for you. Mm -hmm. I want you to feel this, just run your hand over Oh, like yeah, that. yeah. Okay, so what happens is when you cut batting, this is really important, you guys, and again, the online classes, we, we go... We spend a lot of time on things like this and explain, explain, explaining it. But the reason you don't want it, people will say, why doesn't he just bring it under like that? Well, that, when you do that, it creates all kinds of issues with pull marks and, and the, the final line. You want a nice, clean line. Mm -hmm. Believe it or not, when you cut something even, whether it be cotton or day or foam, even with the edge, when you wrap the, when you wrap the fabric around, it actually brings the edge of the batting over the sharp edge, just enough. Now, I want you to do that, Jimmy. First, I want you to pat it like that. Mm. Just pat it like that. And now I want you to run you, try to act as the fabric. Do you feel that? Do you feel yeah. the batting, how it goes? Somebody else. Right to the edge. Another, Another question. Another question of the cool uh, comment by Gabriel said, Jimmy thinks that I am out there. <laughs> My project is an octopus chair. Oh my God! And she said she'll show us pictures of that. What does that mean? It looks like an octopus. <laughs> well, I think it's probably <laughs> it's probably in a lobby somewhere, um, a big lobby, I bet. A yeah, lobby please share show. that with us when you're done. Yeah, I would like to see that. It has eight that arms. Would be fun. Yeah. Eight arms. What the heck? Wow, I'm I, sure. Yeah, it's a lobby that, chair. you know, this is like one of those periods type of chair or furniture. Yeah. Who could have? Yeah. So, so, so what I'm, what happens now here? This is this is a tough transition here, Jimmy. Mm -hmm. Hello. Yes. <laughs> I'm looking at my other end. This is a tough transition. The goal on your edges is to not double up on the on the dacron. Doubling up on the dacron that makes makes for a bad product on the fabric. You're gonna see you're gonna see bulk, bulky. You don't want that. You want okay. So the trick here is to get it cut stapled and cut so that's just one layer all the way around that round leg that you have there. Okay. So what you do is you grab hold, you get a staple, try to get it right where the curve is. You get a few staples up. Okay. Watch this. Okay. Then what you need to do is cut it to the left of the staple. 
So this flaps out. Look at that. Wow. Okay. That flaps out, and now, now, when you're doing a pleat, you never want to cut it even. Your pleat gets cut. This is where a lot of people make their mistake with this. Well, they look. think they have to. Uh, they think they have to do this. Look, fold this, and look at it. Doesn't it's not great. Okay. Right. So what so do you this do? here, you just cut it even. Look. Okay. Now watch what I do now. I'm going to take this. I'm going to pull this down. Now, people say, well, that doesn't look good. It looks better with the pleat. Remember, they cry and you're not making it look pretty. You're trying to make it feel pretty. <laughs> right? Right. Soft so, and everything. Now I'm going to take this and just finish here. And I notice that I you had, just I have that pin tap. Yeah. So what you're going to do, and I'm going to cut this. I just want to finish this up. Okay. So look at look at this. Now, this That's doesn't look like much, but when you feel it, Jimmy, feel it. It's, it's going to well, with, with the fabric. It's, nice it's going to be nice, right? Now, yeah. this is look at how open this is. Okay. You need to you need that open in order to get your fabric in there. So what I'd like you to do before we leave is maybe finish go along here with the staple gun, mm -hmm. and then take your pin tacks out and maybe cut that. Sounds good, doctor. So Jimmy had an idea to flip this chair like that, um, which is fine. He's doing what's comfortable and safe, and that's his method of doing it, which is fine. But when I do something like this, I, I think I try to keep the piece up. It's just the way I do it. With the way he's doing it, it's probably he can see it, but he doesn't have to. He doesn't have to kneel down, and he's got a piece of furniture that he can handle like that. A lot of times. You have a sofa or a, or a big chair. You can't. You can't really turn it like this, and or when you turn it, it's way up here. He's working on ottoman, so it works for him. But if you're going to flip things like this, make sure that the, the, the your, your your bench is clean of staples or dirt, especially when you're using your fabric when you're doing your fabric. It's oh, especially fine. the fabric. Yeah, but what he's doing is probably a safe way of doing it, and we always look for safety too. So it's interesting. Everybody has different techniques. And you know, the techniques that you come up with are trying to speed you up a little bit if you're doing it professionally. Uh, come up with your own techniques of mine. Notice on Jimmy's, he's got a staple gun turned. He listened to me. It doesn't matter that the staples aren't straight. I always like telling a story about I delivered a chair. Uh, I was delivering a chair and it was upside down when I was bringing it in or sideways. And the customer saw that on my cane brick, all the staples weren't exactly right next to one another. They were a little this way. Oftentimes when you're putting cambric on, you're, you're fighting the underlayers. So it's a good idea to turn your gun a little bit so that you don't go on top of another staple that you put in straight. Do you follow me? So the customer saw that. She was very unhappy and she complained. She said, I'm not accepting this. The staples on the cambric are crooked. I said, and I explained to her why sometimes we do it that way. It's just traditional upholstery. And she said, well, she wasn't buying it. And she was going to make me take the chair back to try to, you know, do make them straight, which was a bit fine. I thought I, I had a little fun with this customer, so I said, I noticed that there was a brand new chair in the room. I know I told this story before, but I think it's worth repeating. They give us upholsters a hard time sometimes, some customers, you know. And uh, I said, yeah, that's a brand new piece from, I won't mention the name, a very high-end, very high-end chair, very high-end, very, a lot of money. And she said that. That's a high-end chair. And I'm, I said, do you th have you looked at the staples on that? And she said, no. I said, how come? You, you looked at my staples on my game brick. And she said, well, I just assume I know that they're, I know that they're straight. I said, I'll tell you what, I'll make a bet with you. I said, if they're not straight, if they're worse than the ones I put in, I'll give you the chair for free. <gasps> really? And she said, sure. We went over and tipped the chair out, and you wouldn't believe the mess that I saw when I turned this chair over, Jimmy. Not only were the staples going each and every way, there were staples halfway in, there was a whole, it almost looked like they took a sleeve of staples and hammered the sleeve of staples in there. It was unbelievable. She said, how much do I owe you? I said, oh, it's a double or nothing. <laughs> so, you know, don't be so hard on your upholstery. He's doing the, he or she is doing the best job that they can do with the equipment that they have and what's humanly possible is another thing, please. 
So as Jimmy is finishing up with that, um, is, unless there's other questions or comments, I think I think we'll just pan we'll pan out with Jimmy working on his piece by himself. He's the star after all, right? Well, that's what they say. I don't know how well that's true or not. I'll let it roll for a little. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Jimmy knows he's live. I know, no swears. Or anything like that. Yeah, yeah, you guys watch the language as I kind of work this a little bit. I don't have a beat button I can press. Oh, that, 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 you got to work on that, Patrick. <laughs> That's a next year's budget. <laughs> How's it going, Patrick? We'll let this roll, guys, until exactly one hour. One more minute, Jimmy. <laughs> okay. And of course, I'm out of staples. There you go. That's a good way to end it, Patrick. Being out of staples? Yeah. <laughs> okay. That's well, let's see how fast he can reload the staple. Well, yeah, yeah. I, I, I need something. Uh, uh, I need uh, that's it? Yeah. <laughs> All right. We'll sign off. Bye, guys. <laughs>